Let's talk a little bit about the psychology of investing. Uh, so we've talked tech about some of the technical factors, how to think about what a business is worth. You want to buy a business at a reasonable price. You want to buy a business that's going to exist forever, that has barriers to entry, where it's going to be difficult for people to compete with you. Um, but all of those things are important, and a lot of investors follow those principles. The problem is that when they put them into practice, and there's a panic in the world, and the stock market's heading down every day, and they're watching the value of their IRA or their investment account decline, uh, the natural tendency is sort of to do the opposite of what makes sense. To be a successful investor, you have to be able to avoid some natural human tendencies to follow the herd. When the stock market's going down every day, your natural tendency is to want to sell. When the stock market's actually going up every day, your natural tendency is to want to buy. Uh, so in bubbles, you probably should be a seller. In busts, you should probably be a buyer. And you have to have that kind of a discipline. You have to have a stomach to withstand the volatility of the stock market. The key way to have a stomach to withstand the volatility of the stock market is to be secure yourself. You've got to feel comfortable that you've got enough money in the bank that you don't need what you have invested uh, unless uh, for many years. That's a key factor. Number two, you have to recognize that uh, the stock market in the short term is what we call a voting machine. It really represents the whims of people in the short term. Uh, stock prices are affected by many things, by events going on in the world that really have nothing to do with the value of certain companies that you invest in. So you've got to just accept the fact that what you own can go down meaningfully in value after you buy it. That doesn't necessarily mean you've made an investment mistake. It's just the nature of the volatility of the stock market. How do you get comfortable? You don't just buy a stock because you like the name of the company. You do your own research. You get a good understanding of the business. You make sure it's a business that you understand. You make sure the price you're paying is reasonable relative to the earnings of the company. Let's say this is just not for you. I don't want to invest buy individual stocks, it just seems too risky, I, mean, I don't have the time to do my own research. Uh, what are your alternatives? Well, your alternatives are to outsource your investing to others. You can hire a money manager, or you can hire a group of money managers. And there are a couple of different alternatives for a startup investor. The most common alternative are mutual fund companies. So what's a mutual fund? A mutual fund is a, uh, I guess technically it's a corporation where you buy stock in this corporation and the, and the manager selects a portfolio of stocks. So what they do is they pool together capital, money from a large group of investors. So let's say they raise a billion dollars and they take that money and they invest in a diversified collection of securities. Now the benefit of this approach is that with a tiny amount of money, you know, you can, even less than $1,000, you can buy into a diversified portfolio managed by a professional manager who's compensated to uh, do a good job for you investing in the market. So mutual funds are a good potential area for investment. The problem is there are probably seven, 8,000, maybe 10,000 different mutual funds, and some are fantastic and some are not particularly good. So you need to do research to find a good mutual fund manager in the same way that you need to uh, find individual stocks. So it's not just the easy thing of just investing mutual funds. So here are a few key success factors in identifying a mutual fund or a money manager of any kind uh, uh, to select. Number one, you want someone who has an investment strategy that makes sense to you. You understand what they do and how they do it. Uh, they're not appealing to your insecurity by using complicated words and expressions that you don't understand. If they can't explain to you in two minutes what they do and how they do it and why it makes sense, then it's a strategy you shouldn't invest in. Number two, and this is not necessarily in this order, this probably should be number one, is you want someone with a reputation for integrity. If, again, if you're starting out, you probably want to invest in some of uh, a mutual fund that's sponsored by some of the larger uh, mutual fund complexes as opposed to a tiny little mutual fund that's privately uh, by a, a mutual fund company that you've never heard of. There's some benefit in uh, the, uh, the larger institutions. You, you can be more confident that they're not going to steal your money. Um, you want someone, uh, an approach where the investor invests money on the basis of value. And now this sounds kind of, kind of obvious, but you know, value investing is, has a very long-term track record. And now there are other kinds of investing, including technical investing, where people are betting on stocks based on price movements. Uh, but I highly uh, recommend against those kind of approaches. So you want someone who's making investments where they're buying companies based on their belief that the prospects of the business will, will be good and that the price paid relative uh, to what the business is worth represents a significant uh, discount. You want to invest with someone that has a long-term track record. A long-term track record, and I would say five years is the absolute minimum. 
And ideally, you want someone who's got 10, 15, 20 years of experience investing in the markets because there's a lot that you can learn being a long-term uh, investor in the market. You want someone who has a consistent approach where they haven't changed what they do materially year by year, that they have a stated strategy that they've kept to thick and thin that's enabled them to earn an attractive return over uh, their uh, lifetime as an investor. And I always say, in some ways, most importantly, you want someone who's investing the substantial majority of their own money alongside yours. You want someone whose interests are aligned with yours. If it's a mutual fund, you want them to have a lot of money in their own mutual fund. If it's a hedge fund, which is a uh, privately uh, sold uh, fund for investors who have uh, higher net worths, you want a manager who's investing alongside you as well. We started with a little lemonade stand company, and the purpose of that was to give you some of the basics and how to think about a business, you know, where the profits come from, what revenues are, what expenses are, what a balance sheet is, what an income statement is, how to think about a, what a business is worth, how to think about uh, what the difference between a good business is versus a bad business, how debt uh, offer is generally lower risk but lower return, how equity investors or investors who buy the stock or the ownership of a business have the potential to earn more or, or lose more. We use that as a back, just as the basics to get some of the vocabulary to think about investing. And we talked about uh, investing in the stock market. Uh, we talked about uh, ways to think about how to select investments, how to deal with some of the psychological issues of investing, we covered a fair amount of ground in a relatively short period of time. Now, I entitled the lecture, Everything You Need to Know About Finance and Investing in Less Than an Hour. Well, it really isn't everything you need to know. It's really just an introduction, and hopefully uh, I didn't mislead you by uh, inducing you to watch this for an hour. But there's a lot more that can be learned, and there's some wonderful books that can teach you on the topic. So I think what's interesting about investing, whether you choose this as a full-time career or not, if you're going to be successful in your career, you're going to make some money. And how you invest that money is going to make a big difference in the quality of life that you have and perhaps that your children have or the kind of house you're able to buy or the retirement that you're going to be able to enjoy. You know, we talked about the difference between a 10% return and a 15 and a 20% return over a very long lifetime what impact that has in terms of how much wealth you create over the period. Uh, so investing is going to be important to you whether you like it or not. And learning more about investing is going to have a big impact on your, your, uh, your quality of life. If, if money is something that you need in order to uh, meet some of your goals. I got interested uh, when I was probably 22 or 23. I started uh, interested in being an investor. And I read a book. I read uh, a book called The Intelligent Investor. It was written by Ben Graham. And uh, Ben Graham is a famous value investor. And it's kind of like reading uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's ex essays on existentialism. You read it, and, and it either is an epiphany and affects the way you live your life, or it's of no interest to you. And this was the equivalent, but in investing, I found it fascinating. And uh, what I liked about investing is it was something very accessible even to someone who's 22 or 23. What's kept me intrigued is that one of the, it's one of the few jobs where every day you can study something new. You're constantly learning about new businesses, new situations, new management teams, new issues. Uh, so it's infinitely challenging. Uh, and uh, the world and the stock market are obviously very dynamic places, so the challenges uh, continue. These same concepts, while they're useful in deciding how to invest your portfolio, they're also very useful to you in thinking about decisions like buying a home, uh, making decisions in your line of work, whether to hire additional people. You know, this, these kinds of calculations and thought processes are, are helpful, and they're helpful in life, and I recommend that you learn more. Thank you for uh, paying attention, and uh, I wish you well.